from the Wall Street Journal, large tech companies prepare for acquisition spree. Tighter market for tech tools could leave fewer options for cash strapped CIOs, industry analysts say. You've heard me talk about the general consolidation of economic power that happens under corporatism because of intellectual policy, uh, excuse me, intellectual property policy, because of all these different legal things that favor large corporations over small businesses. They are in a position to always buy up smaller businesses. This lack of uh, natural competition creates the possibility for the conglomerates that we have today. And you've heard me talk about this in regards to the coronaphobia crisis, especially with regards to commercial real estate as businesses go out of business and they are no longer renting commercial real estate. That is going to go down in price. We saw the uh, just explosion of properties for sale and for lease for uh, commercial real estate. And this is going to literally allow the people who have cash right now, geez, who has cash right now? The people who are friends with the system, the central bankers, the major corporations, the slush funds, the investment funds, you know, all of these rich assholes who have been able to take advantage of the system are sitting on piles of cash right now. And I, I really, you know, this, this Thomas Jefferson quote, I think is, is so prescient now. Um, and what he was talking about what here was the, the, the idea of, of a private bank and in national banks. So I, I got to get this right finally after, you know, paraphrasing this quote so many times in the last week. This is from Thomas Jefferson, quote, if the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Such a beautiful prescient quote, because if we allow private banks to control the issue of currency, well, that's kind of where we are today. now. Is the Federal Reserve a private bank or is it a government agency? It's it's both. It's, it's a public-private partnership hybrid. I don't care to parse out the semantics here, but we have a banking system that controls the issuance of currency, not just through the Federal Reserve and the overnight lending window, but through fractional reserve banking, where banks are able to lend out more money than they have in their reserves. And instead of having the market as a fair check on the liability that that represents, they have the Federal Reserve system the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, backing them up, removing the liability. What this means is that profits are privatized, losses are socialized, and we all suffer as a result of this. Now, homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration, right? Maybe a little hyperbole from Thomas Jefferson in the sense that, yes, we still have the right to, to go out and buy homes, and we can, like I am here at the Garden of Freedom, building on und undeveloped land, creating my homestead from scratch. And that doesn't actually deny the fundamental truth and prescience of, of what Jefferson was pointing out here. How many American homeowners actually own your homes? Very few of you. You don't. You have a loan. You have a bank note. You have a mortgage. You're essentially a renter. You, you have an ownership agreement through a bank, through government, where if, if they want to take it away at any time, if they want to foreclose, uh, they can. It is, it's not yours. I mean, even here on this land, I think this land is mine because I've declared it sovereign. And uh, I, I claim a lodial title to my land property here in Juniper Wood at the Garden of Freedom. But if you're still paying property tax, it means that your ownership is, a, is, is not a right. It's a privilege. And what's the result of this? Now, we have more homeless people 
on American streets and we have empty homes. Something is really wrong here. And so back to the story here, because it's not just about real estate, it's also about companies and control of the flow of goods and services in society. So after pushing the pause button during the coronavirus pandemic, big enterprise technology companies later this year are expected to go on a shopping spree for smaller tech firms, industry analysts say. The tighter market could leave fewer options for cash strapped chief information officers. What this means for CIOs is likely higher prices and less choice. Mr. Del Prete said many large IT providers over the next few years will be looking to fill gaps or expand into new markets in part by targeting embattled startups, struggling to reignite sales and raise capital. Now, we brought you the story yesterday that Facebook stock just keeps going up and up. Revenues keep going up. Businesses shifting to more online business means that these tech giants have more power, means that they also have more relative power. Amazon.com. You know, I'm grateful that we have this service, but that it came about the way that it did under this this umbrella of corporatism that promotes consolidation is just it created the potential for abuse that Amazon has. And just for, for people who don't know, one of the great uh, historical examples of this was uh, there used to be a website. I don't remember its name and neither do you. That was the home for baby products online, like diapers. And Amazon came in and undercut them by operating at a loss in that sector in order to put them out of business and then buy them up and uh, basically take over the, you know, that, that sector of online retail that was still being dominated by one of their competitors. If you had the ability to really compete, any startup could say, we're going to be like Amazon, but without the bullshit, and they would be able to, to, to compete and it would take years, of course, ramping up, but they wouldn't have this huge hill to climb in correcting this imbalance that we have today. And again, localization, pulling the plug on the centralized system that allows for all of this corporate financial evil is the only way out of this politically. We have to take away their toys, their tools of manipulation. So now we have uh, what, what they're saying with this article is that there is going to be a tight market. I don't think that's the case. I think that you're going to see uh, a lot of these smaller businesses with great technology desperate to sell out more so than before. This is the product of the coronaphobia crisis. Now, there might be at this sort of intermediary, intermediary level or this higher level of acquisitions like, you know, uh, Facebook buying up Snapchat, buying up, uh, I'm sorry, they, they didn't buy up Snapchat. This, uh, well, they bought up WhatsApp and they bought Instagram, right? Those are subsidiaries of Facebook, you know, partially integrated in their platforms, but fully integrated in the flow of money. And so with these big tech companies, able to get it's sort of what companies are on the, the gain versus loss side of this line a lot of the smaller businesses are going to be on the loss side because they're suffering from the coronavirus shutdowns the forced unemployment crisis whereas the bigger companies are able to profit from them and then buy up the smaller companies and what you're going to get with is corporate consolid what you're going to get out of this is further corporate consolidation this isn't a new thing this is something that is exacerbated by this crisis. And it's not just about the money and the and, and the, uh, the the companies. This is about politics as well, consolidating power, making it harder for people to declare their independence or maintain their independence. We go now to GreenwichTime.com. China signals plan to take full control of Hong Kong. Please, please get this picture up on the, on the screen, CJ. Pan-democratic legislator Lam Chuk Ting is taken away by security during a legislative council's house committee meeting in hong kong monday may 18 2020 just a few days ago scuffles broke out at hong kong's legislature for a second time this month with security guards ejecting several pro-democracy lawmakers as the city's pro-democracy and pro-beijing camps continue to wrestle for control over a key committee that scrutinizes bills do you remember what was happening in hong kong before the coronavirus hit now, I'm not here to play conspiracy theorist and speculate as to all the potential corrupt manipulations of those in power around coronavirus, but I guarantee you they are certainly enjoying the opportunity here. See, did you get did you get that video up on, on this one as well? You can actually see the law the lawmaker here carried out with without his shoes 
uh, dragged out. You know, I, I love seeing this and I'm, I'm hopeful because when I see scenes like this, it means that the, the, the people's voice is at least in some way being represented by government. Yeah, that's it, CJ, please. Just this is this is nuts to see that this is what is that? I look at look at him. He's got a cell phone in his hand. I bet he's live streaming that right now. You know, good for him standing up to this nonsense and for the independence of Hong Kong. This is a you know a critical story in the fight for human progress. And uh, you know to see this as a global phenomenon of consolidation of power is absolutely critical to understanding what's going on. It's not just what we're seeing in the United States. Of course, this is a global thing, and it's true about governments. It's true about corporatism. It's true about power. I hope that as we see this blatant power grab happening with coronaphobia, that we're able to learn the lessons from this.